Meanwhile, Steve Swart from the ACDP joins us in our parliamentary studios to react to the judgment in the spy tape saga. A very good morning to you, sir, and welcome. Good day to you, Elvis, and good day to your viewers. First and foremost, your reaction to the judgment today. Well, it was to be expected, given the fact that the president's legal advisors, as well as the NPA, had conceded the point before the judgment was given. So the appeal was rejected. The question arises, why did the legal advisors wait to the latest stage? And why was the appeal lodged? if the point was conceded at the last point. Again, we have a lot of wasted taxpayers' money and the court's time, as the point was conceded that the previous prosecutor, the NDPP's decision to withdraw the charges on the basis of the spy tapes was irrational. And it's taken eight years to reach this point. Where do you think does this leave President Jacob Zuma? Well, the, point, the, the matter will now obviously be referred back to the NPA, to the NDPP advocate Sean Abrams, and one would expect then that President Zuma will make further representations to the NPA, again, delaying the matter. He's been a, a great at delaying this whole matter for eight years, although he has always said, please give me my day in court to prove that I'm innocent of the 783 charges. But one expects that his legal advisers will make further representations to Sean Abrahams, possibly on the basis that the matter has taken so long to get to court, which obviously is President Zuma and his legal advisers' own fault. But they'll say justice delayed is justice denied, and possibly on that basis and other bases that the matter should not proceed. However, the NPA then is the one to take the decision as to instituting the charges and to consider those representations. So this matter is not going to be finalized very quickly. Depending on what the NPA then finds, that decision itself could then be taken on review. So it's going to be a further process of litigation and again, sadly, at the taxpayers' expense. We heard from some political parties, the UDM, General Bantulomisa has indicated that uh, the president should now step down. Your thoughts on that? Well, it's very clear that this together with so many other scandals surrounding President Zuma, just again aggravates and, and substantiates the cause for him to stand down. We as the ACDP have said he should stand down because of the public protector's findings against him, the State of Capture report, the Encanda report, and the whole issue of looting of state resources. So yes, this adds to the clarion call for him to stand down, given the fact that there's nothing to prevent those 783 charges being reinstated against him, short of him making substantial representations. So yes, from our side, this adds to the call, and we would support calls for him to stand down, but clearly he hasn't adhered to those calls in the past. There have been seven motions of no confidence against him. There was uh, the other motion of no confidence that nearly succeeded. Forty ANC MPs are suspected to have either abstained or voted in favor. So there is a definite shift, and we are seeing continuing looting of state resources, which is a great concern to us. We'll be starting the ESCOM inquiry this coming week. So the evidence, the prima facie evidence is there, and we again would urge the president and support the UDM's call to stand down, given the scandals, given the impact that it has had on economic growth. Consider the fact that the economists, economists are saying our economy should be growing at 5%. It's only growing at 1%, largely due to the high level of looting and plundering of state resources via SOEs that is taking place. We believe justice and righteousness will prevail and that it is a time for him to stand down. I thank you so much for your time. That was Steve Swartz from the ACDP chatting to us from our parliamentary studios. Now,